G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. Mm. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. Let's talk about St. Kilda. They finished 10th uh, with a record of 10 wins and 12 losses this year with a percentage of 91.5%. Another one of these, one of four teams in this, uh, in this review where their preseason expectations would have far outshadowed what they actually produced this year. And it was pretty evident early in the season that they weren't going to deliver on mm. those expectations, having won a final last year. Um, they had some really pathetic performances. We'll start off with the positive stuff. Um, Jack Steele, outside chance yeah. for the Brownlow. Yeah, um, great year. Not realistically going to win it, but um, certainly probably all Australian quality. Yeah, in the fig. Yeah, that's it. Um, Max King. Have mm. you, you liked what you've seen of Max King? Yeah, it's been good to see him get on the park but after he's like Cal Fisher's early mm. and he's like pre draft career yeah and like getting himself his body under him it's good to see him get some results from it when he fills out and mm. like hits his peak he's going to be unstoppable uh, he is so good 202 centimeters of man meat and uh, then um, quick as shit both of them yeah yeah they're both fantastic and he ended up kicking nearly 40 goals this year i think as well max king maxi did shit didn't yeah know, like 38 i think or at least 38 uh, going into the final round i can't remember exactly but um yeah, it kicked six goals against mm. West Coast, so I saw up close what he's capable of, and uh-huh. the King Twins are stars. But um, it wasn't there wasn't too much optimism going about this year. I remember their poor start. They showed some life at times, though. Like, do you remember that when we live streamed the first yeah. St Kilda Eagles game, and they overran us, came back yeah. from thirty two points down, and yeah, I had the money on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah good times. Um, yeah. I got on at halftime at like ten bucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we we saw there was life in that team, mm. and they, they just yeah. kept falling away, and then kept yeah. coming back and falling away, and ultimately they're just not really realistically a finals chance. But um, Brad Crouch came in, built a little bit of momentum uh, from St. Kil- uh, from Adelaide. Uh, Brad Hill started the year poorly, moved mm. onto a higher back flank to varying success, but um, other than that. Huh. It's uh, it's it's a pretty bleak year for St Kilda, I would say. Negatives would include some really, really pathetic losses. Yeah, seventy five points against Essendon. That was stunning when yeah. it happened. Essendon ended up finishing higher. Yeah. one hundred and eleven points against the Dogs. Oh, one hundred and forty four to to thirty three. Yeah, that was bloody piss poor. To com- uh, compound that, they coughed up big leads against Adelaide and Geelong. Uh, five goals for both of those games, maybe six against Adelaide. Uh, ended up losing both, and ultimately that cost them a top eight spot. Yeah. Inaccuracy in front of goal, like like your boys as well. And uh, Dan Butler's a player who... Um, Big down year from him compared to last year. It's probably harsh to single him out, but that's very true. He was one yeah. of the best small forwards in the game last year and this year. Did yeah. he end up getting an All-Australian last year? No, I think Liam Ryan got it and a lot yeah. of people were upset about that, although I'll yeah. back Liam Ryan. Because <laughs> he was that. in the 40, though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was certainly in that mix. They are clearly a better side when Ryder and Marshall were in that team together. And... They struggled to get them together yeah. through injuries. They Funny, wasn't that injuries. last year when they were both playing, they were worse? Wasn't that the thing last year? Uh, I don't remember it that I way. remember last year they were sort of trying to figure out how to get co- have the two coexisting. I think they worked it out, though, from yeah. memory. Like, I think, I think they... Yeah. they Based on this year, they worked it out, but I don't think last year they had uh, it fully. I reckon, I reckon they did last year. They, they I remember there being a year. thing about not wanting to play both of them. I remember that uh, being a narrative at Maybe at point. the start? I think people yeah. criticise the recruitment because it's like, why would you pick up Paddy Ryder when you got Roland Marshall? But I may, maybe at the start, but I, I reckon t- towards the end of last year, middle of last year, they, they were really good together. Yeah. Um, and this year, they just haven't gotten together um, at the same time. It's barely happened. And just generally underperformed for a team that won a final last year. So 
Uh, I'm thinking an F. Are you thinking an F, or is that too harsh to drop from sixth well, to tenth? Because I remember I wasn't as so sort of, I sort of either had him in that scraping in finals or just missing finals, and they That's just it. missed finals, so probably a D just because they just missed finals. Mm. Whereas it would have been a C if they'd just made finals. Uh, I'll give him an F. I, I just think it's not so much just the ladder position; it's just how far off they looked at times this year. Mm. Um, so they get an F for me. Their, their draft position is a nine is pick nine forty six sixty four. So not a lot of picks, but they've got a top ten pick. Uh, how would you advise them to go about this off season? Mm. With where their list profile is at, they have traded in a lot of players over the last two years. So yeah, they traded in like four or five best twenty two players last year. I'd probably the year before al- almost split nine into a couple mm. of picks. Yeah, that that could be. A good I think idea. that'd be something worth doing. Taking a couple of like those mid late first second roundy type. Kit. Yeah, like who was that team we're talking about with the two twenties? I was suggesting they. Uh, was it Hawthorne? Yeah, someone like that. Or was they could you, someone like that could do those two picks yeah, if they wanted to try and get that high end talent? Yeah, it was Hawthorne because I thought they needed more high end. Right. So yeah, yeah, you could do something like that, like a nine for a twenty one and twenty five yeah. or something. Yeah. Which could work for St Kilda because, as you reckon, that second round group's pretty good, yeah, pretty even. So you can have a couple of dips of that pie. Yeah, get does. a couple of support players for a list that you expected to make the eight. A couple of guys that could help add consistency to that list rather than really push mm. the floor, sort of thing. Yeah, I, th- I think they can afford to go to the draft. I don't know if anyone's going to come up that's worth trading in. They've traded in heavy. They've probably spent yeah. a bit on contracts as well. Um, Hanbury's still on their list, for instance, and. Yeah, all like your Butler, your Hill, um, yeah. Dougal Howard, all those players that yeah. traded in Jack Higgins last year and someone else, Zach Jones. Yeah, yeah. The, the list goes on. They've traded in players and, and probably paying them a reasonable amount. It's probably time to, to hit the draft. 